I'm back over here at Greg Finnegan's Race Engine Challenge Dyno Facility in Charlotte, North Carolina. He's wanting me to do some carburetor work for this dyno mule that he has on the stand. Well, he's already dynoed this combination with EFI and it did pretty good. Uh, he put the carburetor on here and it's a Holly XP and it's not it's like out of the box type deal um, let's take a look at it you see it right there it's a Holly XP now the fuel injection setup that he's using is controlled by mega squirt all of you older guys probably know about that name but it is a it's a, a fuel injection system that's been around for quite some time and the first run that he made with the Holly was completely out of the ballpark I mean not in a good way meaning that the afrs were all over the place and efi beat it so my job is to make carburetors beat efi if i can the first order of business that we're going to do is i'm going to look at the air fuel ratios of what the carburetor delivered versus the efi and i already know that this was way way out uh, greg had dialed in the AFRs with the EFI, he had spent an immense amount of time getting the EFI set up dialed in. So tell us about what you learned about dwell and well, all of that. We put larger injectors in there. These are like 96 pound ones. I think the other ones in there were like uh, maybe about 50 psi. So the reason you put a larger uh, pound per hour injector so you can narrow the pulse width. So you can move 12 time. The, 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 where you want the injector to occur in relation to the intake valve. Because the pulse width with these 96 pounders are only about 38, 40 uh, duty cycle. Yeah, so how much duty cycle was you running at with the old well, ones? The you old were ones pretty... were, we were pushing at 80%. Okay. Uh, which is pretty close to, um, um, as far as you'd want to typically go, you 80% duty cycle, that's getting close to where you want to be. Anyway, we picked up a noticeable amount of power by doing that phasing with the larger injectors, moving around when the pulse occurred in relation to where the intake valve is. It really, it was really worth the time. So we also have someone else here with us today. Tell us your name and what you're doing. Uh, my name is Gilbert Barnhart, and I am here to look at the dyno setup we have here and hopefully learn more about it, more about engine building, it seems, which is added bonus than anything I was going to get. So what we're going to do is I have changed the jets in here. It had 92s in it from Holly. This thing was box stock, believe it or not. And so I pulled three numbers out, but I staggered jetted it so that, because when you see the graph, and I'll show you the graph before we fired up, it was all over the place. You notice that we have O2s in every primary over here on this side. We can read four four channels at one time then we can switch it over to the other side if we want but let's take a look at that afr now it looks bad and it really is and the reason why i say that on the front primary it was down into the nines okay starting out and the highest it got was 11.3 the problem is number four started out at 14.5 This tells a story. This is what we just picked up from the shot in the dark that I took. And it's, you see it's pretty substantial torque gains down below 5,200 thereabouts. Um, but we pull up the AFR for that last run. But, but here's the problem. I've, I've already seen that we've got a problem cylinder that I'm going to have to figure something out for because look at this AFR and you will see what I'm talking about. This is nearly 16 to 1 at the beginning of the run. That's dangerous. 
I mean, I'm not even worried about this down here yet because, yeah, it does stabilize, but it is nowhere close. So, I'm gonna go in there and try to feed that corner about six numbers worth of jet just to see what happens. And uh, once we get that problem ironed out, then we can work on trying to lower the entire curve for the rest of it. Okay, Greg, what did it do this time? Well, we picked up uh, just a few pound feet of torque, but... Uh, Nothing yeah. substantial. No. Yeah. So we're, what's our numbers at? We're at 638 and what, 549? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, pull up the air fuel ratio of that last run. And well, uh, that would be, that would be that's coming right up here. Yeah. I'll go right here. There it is. All right. It's better, but it's, it's better, but it is still all over the place, especially in that cylinder four. So it's obvious that we're not going to pick up a good amount of power getting this thing ironed out. So what I'm going to do now, in the effort to save time, we're going to put the other carburetor on there just to see. Because here, here's the thing, if 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 it's an intake manifold issue or something to that effect, it will trace the same air fuel ratios with that carburetor. If it's carburetor related, we will see a substantial difference. So, in the effort to save time, put a different carburetor on it and we're going to see what happens. Oh yeah, what carburetor are we using? Oh yeah, the VRS 4150. It ain't, it ain't hurt my feelings yet so far, Greg. Every time we've ran it, it's been impressive, hasn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Well, so, no. Holly XP versus VRS. Now, disclaimer, this is a 750 versus the XP being a 950. What kind of difference will it make? I really don't know. And are we going to make a guess now? I'm guessing it's gonna be 12 horsepower down at peak. 12 horsepower? Yep. I'm guessing break even, but I'm guessing it's gonna be up 10 foot pounds down. I'm guessing it's gonna be up 10.1. 10.1. <laughs> Prizes right numbers, right? <laughs> you can see I had to get creative with the fuel line. The reason why is the bowls are spread further apart on the VRS, which means that you can't use a traditional fuel log for the Holly, like you, this right here, but Get a little creative and everything works good. We're getting ready to see what this thing will do. distribution problems as we did with the XP here so we took the four hole spacer that Greg modified right here into kind of like a super sucker we're going to a two half inch spacers open to see if it balances out the air fuel ratio that's what I'm hoping for Look at the air fuel ratio. Now, mind you, this is cylinder 
Um, that's one and that's seven. So the front cylinder on the driver's bank and the rear cylinder are crazy. Meanwhile, the middle cylinders are doing what they should. That's aggravating. So now what we're gonna do is change the header and cause one thing that we have going on is a massive exhaust leak, okay? Yeah. And I think that may be affecting what we're seeing. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to put the tri y headers. What do you think, David? Well, I think that's the way to go. We've got to take these off anyway. Yeah. We aren't making much progress with the no. uh, uh, fuel distribution thing, so we may as well, in quotes, start again and see if the uh, part of the problem is the headers. Yeah. It may or may not be. Yeah, right. that's the thing about dyno testing. We're here to learn and but we're still down on power. Let me go back and look at, I'm gonna pull this up for you. Okay, so here you are. You see, we're at 625. We were at 638 with the other carburetor. Now peak torque is within a couple foot pounds. I think we were at 545 with the XP Holly, but it's still down. Now keep this in mind. This is a 750 VRS versus a 950. I think we really need to get a 950 VRS to test. That way it's apples to apples. little bit of time basically what we've learned all day thrashing on the dyno is that intake manifold does not particularly care for carburetors the air fuel ratio tracked exactly the same with both the holly xp and the edelbrock and as much as i'm a carb guy and i love it EFI just kicked it in the teeth. Yeah. So what is y'all's takeaway from what we learned today? Uh, that's a surprise because that's a uh, basically a Victor, uh, what do you call it, Victor Junior or something like that? Well, it's it's a pro comp. How, how, how close to a Victor Junior is it? I think it's a knockoff. It's a pro comp. And I bought it like 12, 15 mm -hmm. years ago. And yeah. The reason I bought it because it came with uh, the injector bombs already designed into it. That saves me the trouble of doing all that welding. Yeah. And it, uh, the price was kind of, going from memory, it was like $150. And I think the reason was because there was some casting flaws inside the runners. And nothing major. I was able to easily correct it with epoxy. So that's how I ended up with that apple. In addition to that, all I did was port match it to these AFR 235 heads. But it, it, it Procom steals everything from everybody, right? Yeah, they, 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 they do. do. Now, now, let's make it clear here. This is what we believe is happening. With the fuel injection injecting into the ports, the effect of the rubbing that happens between five and seven cylinders mm -hmm. is reduced. But when you put the carburetors on, the fuel follows or tries to follow the air. But it's got to get into that runner, and that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. The five and seven is so close that when the air turns, the fuel doesn't immediately follow it. So one cylinder goes rich and the other one goes lean, more so than the air difference. And that means that the only way we can fix the carburetor power is fix the manifold. Yeah, we would have to do hours upon hours yeah. of grinding in the plenum of that manifold. And testing and grinding yeah, and testing. testing but and grinding. as a fuel injection manifold, that, well, that, that, that that's quite manifold coincidence. Works. I think that's yeah, quite good. coincidence. Or that, or it just likes. That throttle body, it could which be. is about, I think it's a 1350, it's got two... Uh, Monoblades. Uh, well, it's, what would you call it? It's two... Two, uh, two butterflies. Two large, sort of square, square-ish butterflies in there. I think, I'll put a picture of it in so that you yeah, can actually see. I think it was see. rated at 1350. And, uh, All right, here's the deal. The proof is in the pudding. The blue trace is the EFI. The red trace is... 
I mean, the black trace is the Edelbrock carburetor and the red trace is the best Holly XP. So basically the 750 kind of matched the XP Holly. It's down a few numbers up top, which is what I was actually guessing. Uh, down low, you can see that it's close, but we that's a 750 versus a 950. And I do believe if we put a 950 VRS on it that it would improve upon this but when we're trying to gain that much torque down low i do not think any carburetor on that manifold is going to do that that's just my two cents what do you think ah uh, that's that's exactly where i'm at at the moment however i do believe that if we started testing lots of different manifolds we may find one that fuel injection versus carburetor, the carburetors do better. But do we know what yet? No, we don't. That's, we'll put that down on our list to test. That's all right. So I know it's a lot to digest in this video. Uh, like I said, we had the 750 Edelbrock VRS. We had the XP Holly. Um, just trying to see where they stood in relation to EFI and today EFI wins. We will be back. So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. And David Blizzard from Powertech 10. And Greg Finnegan's out there. We will catch you later.